There was an idea called the Avengers Initiative. The idea was to bring together a group of remarkable people, see if they could become something more. Score of 127 to 80. 116 to 48. 117 to 85. With the Olympics quickly approaching, there's been a lot of debate about the best basketball team in USA history. And I'd say for the majority of fans, including myself, it is obviously the 92 Dream Team. Some fans might pick the 08 team, the 2012 team, even Dream Team 2. And wherever you fall in this debate, here's one thing we can all agree on. This current team in 2024 is nowhere near the best USA basketball team ever assembled. This is the best collection of talent in Team USA history. They're better. The, the, the basketball is so much better now than it's ever been. This American team is better than the original Dream Team from 1992. <laughs> Those clips right there were absolutely damning. And once again, show the NBA media, they're so overreactive and childlike when it comes to the modern NBA, as quite literally everything has to be the greatest, the best, the most dominant, or the most influential. Now, when talking about USA basketball, like I stated earlier, the 92 Dream Team by far is the greatest team ever assembled. As when it came to the 92 Olympics, they didn't just win gold, they sent a message to the entire world. As versus their opponents, won by an average of 43.8 points per game. And throughout the entire Olympics, called a total of zero timeouts. And yes, this team top to bottom, they were stacked and they were heavy, heavy favorites. But going to those Olympics, they had tons of pressure, not just to win, but to beat teams by 40, 50 points every single night. And unfortunately for the rest of the world, the dream team, they upheld the standard of USA basketball dominance as versus Angola, won by 68, Puerto Rico, 51, and Germany, 43. I'll open up an $8 billion can of whoop ass and serve it to you, and that's all I got to say about that. The dream team from game one to game eight, they didn't sleepwalk, didn't mess around, and play with their food, as they didn't allow a single country, a single team, to gain a tiny bit of confidence or a sliver of hope. And when you're a great team, a great dynasty, have so much talent, that's what you have to do. Winning by 5, 10, 15 points, it isn't enough. And looking at the current team in 2024, a kind of similar standard to beat every team convincingly. As coming the Olympics, they've been dubbed the USA Avengers. And so far in exhibition play, there's been a couple of moments, a couple of games, where you're holding your breath down the stretch. First off versus Australia, it was a six point game in the fourth quarter with about two and a half minutes left was a toss-up game in that moment. And of course, USA, they still pulled it out. Now, their most recent game versus South Sudan, this one was a nail-biter down to the wire. And if South Sudan makes the bank shot late, they win this game and pull the biggest upset in Olympic history. This game versus South Sudan, I hope, is a massive wake-up call to the coaching staff, the players, and especially USA basketball fans. As conjured a popular belief, you can't just get the best players, the biggest names, toss the ball out there, and win by 30. And if you're looking at Team USA's schedule, you would have said South Sudan, that's the one game they're going to blow a team out by 30, 40 points, and really it's going to be a cakewalk and a breeze. And of course, it wasn't. USA in this game at halftime, they done by 14 points. They had to fight and claw back to win by one point late in the game. What is going on? And where is Andy? And what is going on? Being 43 point favorites and winning by one point, that is a massive disappointment. I don't care what anyone says. And it once again highlights the dream team. They were massive favorites every game by 30, 40 points on a nightly basis. And what did they do? Delivered every single time, winning by 40, 50, even 60. And before I forget, give South Sudan tremendous props. They didn't roll over, quit, and just say, will take this L in the chin. They showed up, they competed, and they played hard. And looking at their roster, a couple of NBA bench players, G League guys, college starters, 
I mean, they have some guys you recognize, know their names, from college or the pros. But this team, by all accounts, shouldn't be losing by one point to the United States. And a lot of fans who are shocked by this game, you know, making some big-time excuses. Well, it was an exhibition game, it doesn't count. You know, it's not the real Olympics yet. Look, if you're playing basketball, have USA cross your chest, representing the country, you gotta win every game and win it convincingly. And if you're playing South Sudan, I mean, it's a 30-point win in your sleep. At least it should be. And also, one of the big-time excuses of the current-day USA team is that, well, the world nowadays is so much better. And look, that is true. But you're playing South Sudan, your 43-point favorites. Out of the entire world, the best teams in the world, South Sudan is far from a juggernaut. And this dud versus South Sudan, I mean, it ends all the talks of being better than the Dream Team or on that level of historic dominance for USA. As looking at this game versus South Sudan, of course, down by 14 at the half, but for the entire game, allowed 100 points. Team USA back in 92, the most points they allowed was 85 versus Croatia, and again, they won by 32 points. Now, in the game versus Croatia, here's their opponents. Drazen Petrovic, Dino Raja, and Tony Kukoc. Three guys who are Hall of Famers and great NBA players. Looking at South Sudan, again, give them props. But the guys on the roster are best scorers in this game. It was Shayok, Karlik Jones, and JT Thor. And one last thing I will say about this game. Yes, USA, they won, they pulled it out. But in terms of morale perspective, it felt like a loss. And making a cross-air comparison, imagine if the Dream Team back in the day only beat Angola by 5 points. That is the equivalent of what happened tonight, beating South Sudan by 1. Now, the last point I will make is pretty simple, and I've been saying it for the longest time. When it comes to the NBA media, the pundits, the so-called experts, their analysis of basketball is pretty simple and rudimentary. They look at a team's roster, their names, see superstars, all-stars, good role players, and immediately say this team, they're winning a championship, they're winning gold, they're going to dominate in all facets. Case in point, the Brooklyn Nets in the early 2020s. Had KD, Harden, Kyrie, and were hyped up as a dynasty before a single game was played. Even worse than that, LeBron, AD, and Russ, they were a lock for a championship and a lock to win 70 games. Then, of course, James Harden, Joel Embiid, the quote-unquote best duo since Shaq and Kobe. And quite possibly the worst, the biggest failure, Paul George and Kawhi Leonard, the quote-unquote kings of Los Angeles. All those teams to varying degrees were hyped up to the moon and came crashing back down to reality once the season ended. When I look at Team USA in 2024, I think they're massively overrated and give off the vibes of a paper champion off sheer name value and star power. And when it comes to guys like Nick Wright, Colin Coward, the usual suspects, since the 2014 is better than the 92 team, those guys are stuck in the present and can't see past that. Which is kind of ironic, those guys, they say old school fans are stuck on nostalgia, they're stuck in the 90s, the 80s. But these guys constantly overrate the present, overhype the present, and get let down routinely. So that right there is the end of the video. As always, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.